Well, good to be with you again this week as we continue our walk through the Word. We're going to finish up the book of Hebrews today, and we're just going to look at one verse, and that's in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. By him, talking about Jesus, therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. The sacrifice of praise continually, the fruit of our lips. What does that mean? Well, number one, we should always be thanking God. Always. Not because you're in a trial or tribulation, not because you're in the midst of the storm, but you're thanking him that he is the way maker out of it. You're thanking him that he is the healer of your disease. You're thanking him that he is the provision in the midst of your lack. You're thanking him that he is the victory over defeat. And you know what? When you're going through that battle, when you're going through that storm, it's not always easy. I know that's a shock. It's not always easy. And, and it can seem like a struggle. It can seem like a sacrifice. But you have to stir yourself up. And in the midst of it all, in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the suffering, and nobody's denying that there is pain and suffering in life. As long as there's a devil, there's going to be pain. As long as there's a devil, there's going to be trials and tribulations. But as long as there's Jesus, there's going to be victory over every trial and tribulation. As long as there's Jesus, there will not be defeat. He will snatch Victory out of the jowls of defeat. And therefore, you have a reason to thank him. Lord, I thank you for victory. I thank you that you're bringing me through the storm. I thank you that you're my savior. I thank you for saving my children. I thank you that you're working in this situation. I thank you that no matter what comes against me, you are bigger and stronger than it all. You and me make a majority and in you I have victory, in you I have joy, in you I have peace, in you I have health, in you I have prosperity. On and on, Lord, I just thank you in the name of Jesus. Now, friend, I'm going to tell you right now, you start to make that part of your life, you make that a lifestyle of praise, the devil's going to find it very, very hard to get a foothold in your life. Because your words connect you either with God or they connect you with the devil. What do I mean by that? When you're speaking words of praise, that's words of faith. Praise is faith. Even when you can't see the victory, when you're praising him for the victory, that's faith. And then we read a couple of weeks ago, there's no pleasing God without faith. God's a faith God. And he's a rewarder of faith. So when you're speaking words of, pra of praise in the midst of contrary circumstances, you're connecting to God the Father, the creator of all. When you're speaking doubt, when you're speaking fear, when you're speaking anything contrary to the word of God, not contrary to what you see, contrary to the word of God. A lot of times we have more faith in what we can see, smell, touch, hear and so on, than we do in the Word of God. We got it backwards. When, you, when you're speaking words of doubt and fear, you're giving the devil a foothold into your life because that's where he operates in the sense realm. So don't do that. Determine right now, today, I'm going to speak words of faith. I'm going to offer up praise. When I feel like doubting, I'm going to speak faith. Now let me ask you this, do you know enough of the word to be able to speak it over your life, to be able to thank God for the promises? If not, you need to start reading the word, get into the word. Uh, my pastor, Pastor Chas Stevenson in Houston Faith Church made a statement yesterday uh, at Wednesday night service and I believe it to be true. That if uh, your attitude towards God's word really conveys your attitude towards God. If you don't have much, uh, uh, much, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? If you have no interest in the word of God, you really have no interest in God. 
If you have no interest in the word of God, his word to you, you have no interest in God. I'll tell you what, I, I, I love uh, Elvis Presley. Uh, anybody that knows me knows I've been following him since I was a little bitty boy. I love Elvis Presley. And I've read, I, I can't tell you how many hours of my life I have spent reading books about Elvis Presley. Why? Because I'm interested in Elvis Presley. Well, doesn't it make sense if you have an interest in God, you're going to read his word? I'm not trying to shame you and make you feel bad. I just want you to get real with yourself. And if you need to make an adjustment, make that adjustment. Lord, I'm sorry. I, I haven't had a good attitude towards you. And I'm sorry, and I, I repent, and from this point forward, I move on, and I'm going to be a, a student of your word because I'm interested in you. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, it'll only do you good. It will only do you good. It doesn't do God good for you to read his word. Of course, it pleases him, makes him happy, but it, it doesn't change anything for him. But knowing his word will change you. Amen. Well, God bless you. I love you. And uh, go to church this weekend. Find you a good church, uh, word of faith church, spirit filled. A balanced church. They're hard to find, but they're out there. If you're in Houston looking for a church, I encourage you to visit Houston Faith Church, Pastor Bruh, Pastor Chaz and Joni Stevenson. I'll tell you what, I haven't been this excited about going to church since, since uh, I used to go to John Osteen's church when he was alive. That's saying something. Read your Bible every day. Spend time in prayer. And remember, if I don't see you around town, I'll see you in heaven.